Welcome to Friday Night's video. I certainly hope you enjoyed the last video on composition. Um, that last video, I certainly hope that it opened up your mind to the concept of it being about you. And it being about you in the same way as developing your own style and technique. And that it is something you're going to have to develop and really work at really with introspection and exploring a little bit and investigating a little bit until you really start to you know get a groove and start to really you know feel your way into that to where you start to develop as a composer with your own style and technique as a composer that's going to be very intercorrelated with your own style and technique as a guitarist I hope I made that very clear so that you focus more on that rather than trying to be somebody else the composer as much as you know the same thing as you trying to be too much trying to be somebody else the guitarist that you're not going to develop your own style and technique so I hope I made that really clear and really opened up that door to you to really be able to see that mirror so that you're seeing back that it's more about you than anything else and really approach the whole you know composing subject you know from that perspective and it probably help you a lot more than just teaching you how to compose because that you will develop as you go along and as you get better so at this point we've talked a little bit about the sound which means basically what is the end sound coming out of your amplifier what stomp boxes you use what effects you use what kind of amps you use all those kind of things um, developing your sound now this subject we didn't make we we touched on in a couple different videos but we haven't exactly addressed it as a subject so we're going to do that now because if you've gotten up to this point in all these videos that as of the last video talking about composition and the video the last couple videos before that that you really at this point should have a really good direction and an idea of what direction you're taking off to off into and at this point you more than likely are going to really be looking at your sound and going well what do I want to do there what sound am I looking for as all these other things you start to explore and investigate and start to try to bring it into what is you in that and where do you want to be in that that your sound is going to start to becoming important and, you know some guitars right away start you know they start immediately start fitting with knobs and effects and all this stuff before they really even understand the concepts that we've talked about so far and really explored those first that they really just took off and started you know messing with other things I was hoping that you'd become a little more well-rounded um, wiser and you know more knowledgeable individual by addressing those other things first so that as we address this issue that it's from a much more informed perspective and we are going to address it as a much more informed and and concept that is going to break down into fundamental components structures and usages and things that you can control in sculpting your sound I studied sound quite a bit when I studied audio engineering and sound is a beautiful wonderful thing I really love sound sculpting and there are so many different things you can use um, we talked about how setting up your rig for the future in one of the videos and you have multitudes of tools to have control of what you do with your sound so basically what we want to address is a couple things the first thing is that almost anything that's happening in your sound is controllable you can control it in some way you can change it to make it more um, how do I say more something more that's more consonant instead of dissonant in the way you see that you want your sound to sound and it, almost every aspect of it you can control that's the good news the bad news is you have to know where the problem is if you don't understand sound at all and you don't understand what an effect is doing or what an EQ is doing or any number of things that are in your signal chain from the hardware to the software to, to any number of things that being able to control it, if you don't know what the problem is can be very different difficult that's the bad news so we're gonna try to address some of those issues so that as you start doing that <clears throat> that you're much more you are a much more 
well-informed individual about what's happening, about what a signal chain is. You know, a signal chain, it starts with your guitar. It starts with the strings. It goes to the guitar pickup. It goes, you know, the components there through the wiring, out through the cord, into whatever you're plugged into, into your DAW interface. If you're setting up the ring like I die, into your computer, out of there, into your interface, out into your head, into your, into your cabinet, and, you know, your signal chain, what's happening, whatever it might be passing through in your DAW, being able to figure out what's happening in the signal chain, you know, you'll be able to isolate what the issue is and be able to sculpt it the way you want or make adjustments. If you have con con things that are happening in your thing signal chain, take, for instance, something really simple like your pickups. One of your pickups has is doing something to the sound that is definitely affecting the sound that is going to, in the end, come out of the head. So, you know, you understanding what that sound is, what the problem is. Well, it's got kind of a honky sound, so I know that that pickup, the way that it's built, is really pushing up in the mid-range around 500 hertz, and I know it is because I've looked at it on a spectrogram. I know it's pushing up in that area, and it's causing that honky kind of sound when... You know, well, any number of things to the spectrum of the sound and understanding that it is affecting the sound so that you're better able to target it and, and adjust it to where you um, are controlling the sound to adjust it to where you want it. It's a very huge topic, and but it's not really all that complicated if you break it down to the basics because... You know, the, the concept that I to normally look at when I talk to people. Now, sometimes you might get pick out a Marshall stack, and you might be good to go. You plug into the head, you plug into the, the cabinet, and you're like, oh, yeah, dude, I'm just in heaven, dude. I just love this. I'm so cool. And I, you off you go. You may not be. You may be much more, you know, wanting to sculpt that sound. So the understanding of that is that I've tried to talk to you about when we talked about setting up the guitar rig to have it set up to where nothing in the signal chain you want to have a decent guitar that is basically the type of guitar that you're probably going to go to a good studio guitar that's very versatile to be able to play different types of genres if that's what you do um, I, I lean more towards a Strat style guitar because I, I like the tones that it, that it produces where I used to like a Gibson a lot. I liked that fat, that fat sound, and I liked that much more when I was younger for some reason. I don't know. As I got better, as I played, I started to lean more towards that. And that was just a preference um, because of the way I, I liked the sound that it produced. So that, you know, there's... And you can even control that. I can myself. I can take my Strat and I can plug it in. I can adjust my EQs and adjust things in my signal chains. Where if you close your eyes and you see me play, you would not. You, I tell you, it's a Gibson. Da 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 da. And you go, oh, that sounds really good. You know, you would not even know after I got done sculpting it. But that takes a little bit of time, and you need to understand what's happening to the sound to be able to do that. And we talked about having a good guitar. Um, a good amp, you know, a good head and a good, you know, cabinet that may not, that you can, you can dial back to where you're being able to color the sound with whatever effects you have, equalizers you have, and things like that. Because most amps in their heads and things like that don't give you as much control that you can visualize and see exactly what's happening. And it's why I wanted you to set up your rig like coming through a DAW or something. So your whole rig has an audio lab built into it in the signal chain to where you can really analyze what's going on. And if the amp and head that you've decided to, to work with, that if it's affecting it in a way you don't like, you can address it inside of your audio lab to adjust issues that you're having or change the sound to where that it's coming out sounding the way you want to. So let's, what we're going to do is we're going to pull out, I'm going to open up my studio and we're going to take a look at the basics because most of the time as you start sound sculpting, you there are some basic components that are happening that you're going to want to adjust. And once you understand the basic things that you're going to want to adjust, you'll eventually understand that you're going to probably need to experiment with those things and what they're doing to the sound to and understand what it's doing to the sound so that you can make proper adjustments 
to sculpt the sound the way that you want it. There are a lot of defining factors in doing that. Even something as simple as the equal loudness contour, which I'm going to pull out a, a, a reference so you can understand. I'm going to we're going to talk about that and EQ are very you know fundamentally intrinsic into you being able to sculpt the sound and understanding what you're doing with it instead of just starting pushing knobs on around and wonder why you've been pushing knobs around for three weeks and it still sounds like crap and you do not sound like you know whatever guitarist that you were trying to sound like because you first of all you don't know what he was doing and you know and you don't know exactly how to achieve that sound or what's going on with that that can be a whole nother issue of trying to understand that some guitarist he may not want to share exactly what he does to get a sound some of them are very simple they've got a very simple setup and now actually you can get a picture of their amplifier and whatever guitar they're using and you're good to go if you buy that setup sometimes not and we've already talked about that you know even if you did that we talked about the concept uh, we talked about when Sammy Hagar was in a, in a concert with Van Halen and he was like Eddie was off getting drunk somewhere and partying and he was like he went up to one of the techs and said can I plug into Eddie's rig you know with my guitar or can I use his guitar I don't remember but I think he was using he just picked up his guitar Eddie's guitar playing through his rig and he couldn't understand why it didn't sound like Eddie Van Halen. He had the whole rig set up there exactly because the, he was on tour with it. But he plugged into it and he was like, well, I sound like me. I, I don't sound like Eddie Van Halen. There's some of the tones and some of the sound that he has, but it doesn't sound like Eddie Van Halen. So you have to also understand that it's very intercorrelated with your style and technique because the way you set up your sound, another guitarist picks it up. They may not sound the same to it. So that can be very confusing to some people if they don't understand that right away that, you know, you, they might be doing something in their style and technique that greatly affects the way it sounds and just the way it plays. And you can buy set up their entire setup the exact same way they have it and never, and never sound exactly like them. You might get close and you just be like, I don't know what the problem is, you know, and it's like, especially for somebody who's not an advanced guitarist. So... You know, we don't want, we, I want to address that issue so you know that it is an issue and so that as you work through those issues that you know they are components in what is happening as you run into difficulties, as you run into obstacles, and as you sculpt and develop your sound um, with your style and technique and the equipment that you have, that those are de factors in defining that. Now, another thing that we're going to talk about is that your actual guitar is is a defining factor in the sound also that's pretty obvious that that is true so you know your guitar is going to affect the sound your head is going to affect the sound your 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 your, your cabinet's going to affect the sound your every one of your stomp backs is going to affect the sound they're going to affect the electricity they're going to affect the sound waves they're going to affect give everything in there is affecting the sound in some way and like we talked about, the cool thing is you can control that if you can target and understand what the issue is and what's causing it to sound a certain way, which sometimes takes a little bit of digging around, trying to figure out where in the signal chain. Is that my head doing that? Is that my cabinet? Is that my new fuzz box thing that I bought? Is that my EQ that, you know, I mean, it's a real simple thing like overdrive. Overdrive, you know, it, historically, overdrive is a real confusing thing because you get a couple different types. You can get overdrive from overdriving the amperage capabilities of a circuit or overdriving the speed capabilities of a circuit, which are going to produce two different types of distortion. One of them is going to be a more of a clipping distortion from um, overdriving the amperage capability, which is going to work out to more of a square wave. Whereas overdriving the speed capabilities of the circuit is going to cause a type of distortion that's more along the lines of a triangle wave or more along the lines of a, uh, of a, of a sawtooth wave. And we'll talk a little bit about that also. But they're totally two different distortions. One of them is very musical, whereas the other is not. One of them, the overdrive the speed capabilities, one of them is very much a, an un 
it's not a ver it's not a good distortion. The other one is. I mean, you get the other distortion where it sounds it the saw or the or the triangle wave comes out sounding. It's a much cleaner and smoothing musical sound distortion. It makes your guitar sound more like a violin or heading in that direction. The type of distortion that it causes. And those are huge factors to understand that you know because if you don't understand that you can play or you can buy five hundred different stomp box of distortions and never have you know I don't never sound but sounds like shit. I don't like it. You know, and so you're not really controlling those sound factors of the distortion. And that's a very simple example of it, you know, dealing with odd harmonics and even harmonics when you're dealing with distortion and sculpting those harmonics. Meaning, <coughs> you might get a long tail coming out from the harmonic signature. You might want to cut it off on the high end or cut some of it off on the low end using a higher low pass filter, trying to sculpt it down to where it's complementing your rig and your setup because you have to understand that everything is in the chain is affecting your sound. So you're going to have to experiment about how you adjust that to where it comes out sounding just the way you want it. Besides just EQing it, you know, high low high and low pass filtering it, trying to clean it up to where you're cutting out crap that's just, you know, dirty distortion that you don't want if that's not what you're looking for. Does that make sense? And you may want some of that mixed in with the sound, you may not want as much. It just is an experimentation. And effects are the same way. Even my even my effects in my studio, and I'll show you some of the simple ones that I have, affect the sound. I've got like an analog delay that I use sometimes, and I know when I plug that analog delay and I put it in the signal chain, then it changes the sound. I don't even have to be using it. I can have it on very minimal, and I can hear the difference in the sound, just it passing through it. And this is a virtual effect. This isn't, you know, a, a hardware stomp box or, 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 or part of a rack mount. This is a virtual effect, and it's affecting the sound when it goes through that without the actual virtual effect, you know, it being used very much and having it like on almost zero. Like you've got like a mix knob that's like, you know, you want to mix the 100% of it or half of it or, you know, or, or almost none of the effect mixed in with the original sound coming from the guitar that even with having it on zero with none of the effect being acted on the sound that it still was affecting the sound and it was obvious. And there was a, I ran into a couple of them that I was like, I was just at a loss. I was like, it's causing the sound to happen. I'd be searching around trying to figure out what is it doing? Well, I know it's changing the sound, but what is it? It's the EQ. It's causing a little bit of distortion. It's causing a little bit of phase. It's causing something to happen. And you're digging around trying to figure out what the heck's it doing? Does that make sense? And sometimes it can be frustrating trying to figure out what's going on. But you just understand everything in your signal chain can affect in your sound, no matter anything you add to it. And to really to look at it and analyze it. And if you're running into a DAW or something, you have you have an audio lab to analyze the sound. Is there something happening to the phase? There's something happening to there's something happening to the spectrum. There's something happening somewhere. There's other, there's added something's going on that's causing a change in sound. You know, it's trying to emulate some kind of analog thing. It's trying to emulate some kind of analog distortion. There it goes, ooh, analog warmth. It's not analog warmth, or it's distortion. So, you know, I mean, there's, there's no such thing as analog warmth. It's distortion. The circuit's bad, and it's not very well put together, so it's causing distortion, which, you know, it basically they learned to use, you know, in a way that was complementary to the production it wasn't that they were all happy about analog distortion in their analog gear but they found a way to make it work you know with reverbs and all kinds of stuff and, and compressors and things to where it came out sounding good because most of them would have been like no screw that shit i can put a distortion pedal on there if i want analog damn warmth bro so that's those kind of things can come into play so all these things can affect your sound and an understanding these things can affect your sound very much helps you when you decide to start messing with your sound so at this point you understanding that that you know it's a really good idea that anytime you add something to the signal chain and even when you just start out with your guitar to really get into your your audio lab that your rig is set up to be in the video that I talked about setting up your rig for the future and analyzing the sound what does the spectrum look like you know what what is the phase of it I mean what is what what kind of things are happening in the sound is 
is there harmonic distortion is it is it what does it look like you know what 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 are the factors of it and you know and in trying to address the issues in each any each step of the signal chain the same as every time you add something it's changing the sound and you need to take a look at it listen to it look at it make adjustments for it i mean there's been some times that i I'll get in there and I'll do something, I'll add something to it, and then I'll throw an EQ on right after that thing. And there'll be, because I had to boost in a certain area or cut in a certain area or put a higher low pass filter on because the effect itself was affecting it in some way that was not good. Does that make sense? Or was cutting out distortion or adding some distortion, which I had to figure out some way to counteract or emphasize or something like that. And it can be very much a process of just painstakingly going through it, going through it, and going through it. And the more time you spend with it, the better your sound's going to be. And as you progress in your style and technique, the better you will be able to equate what's happening there with your style and technique and what things you're doing that are emphasizing the style and technique that you are playing with um, in, in a better way and better emphasizing it the way you want it to. So that's a huge thing. So as we get to this point now and we're going, okay, at this point, I really think you should really be looking at creating, sculpting your sound and what the basic components are. So what we want to look at very from the very beginning is we want to look at your signal chain. We want to look at the most basic components that you have that are going to be most fundamental factors in sculpting your sound. And then we want to look at some more advanced concepts that are going to sculpt your sound a little bit differently to make it more unique. And as we go through this, try to keep in mind that everything we talk about, your own style and technique and the way you play may affect that differently than somebody else. You may not think so, but if I get Bob here and Randy over here and I set up a rig that's set up some certain way and both of them start playing on it and both of them are very developed guitarists, and very comfortable with their own style and technique that it may come out sounding quite a bit different with those two guitarists playing on that rig and the setup that the signal chain is running through so you have to really keep that in mind it's a very personal thing that you have to work with on the basis of you complementing your own style and technique so if you don't have a style and technique yet and you've watched this series and you're going well i don't really have a style and technique bro well we're going to talk about the basics first that you should address first of all and then as you progress and as you become better that the other things that you will address add to your signal chain and, and and experiment with on how those things might affect your style and technique it's like I realized, here's a prime example, that I realized later on in my playing that if I got a really good chorus, and I realized that it was one of the basic fundamental building blocks of my signal chain in building my sound the way I wanted it to, because it added body. It really did. And not only that, is that it really, if you actually added more of the fact that depending on how you used your EQ in conjunction with it, that it could add these textures that my own style and technique, that it emphasized those style and technique gestures and articulations the way I did them differently as I added more. But even if I didn't, just it as a basic building block, added body so that even if I was just playing clean and I was playing very simple stuff that was not really emphasizing my own style and technique in any way shape or form but it was just you know straight guitar playing like studio musician that it, well, I wasn't really trying to show myself as this you know style and technique virtuoso I was just trying to be a guitarist and be complimentary to the composition and be a backing instrumentalist or playing lead or whatever that it added body it added body to where it really was became one of the fundamental factors that i use in building my signal chain when i'm you know sculpting my sound or i teach somebody to sculpt their sound and it was very intrinsic in it and it also became one of those things that i figured out that i can put one on at the end of the signal chain besides the primary one that's part of the basic building blocks and it did some other things that were really cool that sometimes I could really make it sound like chorus happening, you know, and multi-instruments and things like that. And sometimes it would just add this body 
to the instrumentation they would start to color the sound some just from it having the av having the added harmonic content in it and and it really did affect the sound and was really good it was a really cool thing that was <coughs> really intrinsic in some of the things I do with my own style and technique and the way I like my sound that I use it sometimes that I mean it almost all the time it's in my signal chain <coughs> because of the body that it adds and the added harmonic content that it adds to the sound that makes it sound that makes the chords makes the leads and the melody lines sound that much richer and fuller and I really dial back on it so that it doesn't you know sound like chorus you know like there's a chorus back there I know there's a chorus back there it just adds this body and it adds rich harmonic textures to the sound the fundamental sound so that's a huge lesson in itself to understand how important one effect can be in addressing your sound as you develop your own style and technique. So I can go on and on about that, but let's take a look at this. We want to address this from the basic building blocks first, just like we did with guitar theory, you know, starting with the chromatic scale and the interval and degree system. We want to start with the basic building blocks of the sound. So as far as effects affecting the sound and things like that, because we talked about your guitar is going to be intrinsic to it, but you will find that as you develop, I very much, you know, will, will look at you and say, well, do I recommend you get a Strat or do I recommend you get a Gibson? And I can say, well, I love to give it and now I go with a Strat. What happened? I don't know, bro. Just one day I woke up and said, no, I want to pick up Strat. I like the way the Strat sounds better. I like the way it feels in my hands. I like the way, I mean, I just, I mean, it just, everything about it started to, I started, it was much more musical to me in my own preference. Does that make sense? And versatile in the way that I wanted it to be. So I, it's really hard to say what you should start out with or what head. You want a decent head, a decent cabinet, and you want a decent guitar. And just start out with that. Don't That may change. You might buy a hundred damn guitars and you might be all, all over the place and never really have any preference at all. You know, every now and then you might break out dollar cash when you really want to sound like, you know, Tilly Bob. You know, I mean, I don't know. I mean, that can be very true. But you, that will develop. So don't be so much worried about it. I suggest you get a decent guitar, decent head, and decent amplifier at first as that part of the signal chain, you know, and then that may change and develop. If you get a decent head and a decent cabinet, that you more than likely won't change that once you understand your style and your technique and your sound because you can change it with EQ and any number of effects for sculpting the sound that you're not going to go, I'm going to go trade in my, my head because I want a, uh, an orange amplifier. You just I just need to do this to the EQ, do that to that, you know, and go, that well, that sounds just like when I was playing that. Or, you mean, you might go down to the guitar shop and really listen to it and record yourself and say, well, this is what I sound like playing through that orange and this is the sound I like it's doing that. And if you understand sound, you go home to your own head and amplifier and start adjusting the, the things that, if, that cause the orange amplifier to sound the way it does rather than sound like your amplifier, which you can control all those aspects if you can just figure out what the difference is, what's causing that difference. Very simple concepts. So let's break out the studio and let's just take a look at the basic primary building blocks we have to work with and then we'll talk a little bit about a little bit about a little bit more advanced things as you develop your style and technique that you may want to experiment around with so give me a minute when i open up my studio okay so basically what we want to do is the first thing we want to address is you've got your guitar, you've got your head, you've got your amplifier, and if you followed my advice, you've got yourself some type of DAW, and you've started to use it with an interface as the basic well, central access of your rig, that way your rig's set up for the future. So I'm hoping you do that. If not, <clears throat> most of these concepts can apply anyway. You just relate them to what you have. Now, the first thing we want to address is that if we're going to be dealing with sound, what are we going to be dealing with? We're going to be dealing with sound and acoustics. So, you know, the sound is very much a part of the acoustics the science. The science of sound is what acoustics is. So basically, 
What we want to look at first is I very much recommend you get into studying about sound. Start digging around the internet. Start really studying about what sound is, what its opponents, components are. Everything from, you know, if transducers to conductors to, to receivers to even the basic components of sounds of sinusoids, you know, in the frequency realms. What frequencies, um, basic major, you know, basic even an odd harmonics, the harmonic series, what's happening in all those things. There are lots of different things when you start trying to investigate sound that are involved in, you know, what is happening with sound. You know, all the different things can be happening, especially in your signal chain. This is just some, some notebooks that I've made on different con concepts that are related to sound and things that are happening in sound but you know when you start dealing with your audio amplifiers your your however your rig set up you're going to be even dealing with dsp digital signal processing you're going to be dealing with analog signal processing and digital signal processing and investigate into those can also be very very intuitive and or very helpful in you helping you understand that um, I have some notebooks on an analog sound, but um, I basically went, I've got a notebook here on electronics that basically most of that's inside of there. So because it can be, there are a lot of different things that can be interrelated to what is sound and what's happening in the sound in different ways of looking at it. what is a timber and what's all involved in the timber, the time domain, the frequency domain. Well, I mean, there's a lot of different kinds of waves. You know, what types of waves, what is what is a wave, what is its components, you know, different combined things, what uh, different concepts that are related to it. I mean, even periodic waves or semi-periodic, aperiodic, quasi-periodic, and what does that stuff mean? Well, how is that going to affect my sound? And, you know, I mean, well, it does. I mean, it's, you know, I mean, there are basic fundamental concepts that are happening in your sound, even in something as simple as, you know, just the basic building blocks of sound and it just goes on and on and on so you know I studied a lot of this stuff when I was studying audio engineering but I you know because and I became the understanding and I was never going to be able to do that other stuff and I was, didn't understand what I was doing with my crap anyway because I was like well what is that you know I turn this knob it does what oh well, that's so nice you know I felt like an idiot turning knobs around I had no idea what they were doing so it's a very very simple concept to get through your head to really look at that and understand that so that's the first thing a step that I would tell you is really spend some time studying about sound what sound is different concepts that are related to sound in acoustics you know and to really understand what's happening there and and make some notes about it and make some notebooks about what's going on there you know so I mean that's that's very simple so the next thing that I wanted to address is the basic concepts that are happening in your signal chain so we basically want to look at this two ways now the first thing that i've tried to explain to you about how i was hoping you'd help you help you get your guitar rig set up to where your laptop and your audio interface is the central command system for your rig that way you're set up for the future and you've got an audio laboratory which is your DAW to analyze sound in all kinds of different ways and, and to control sound any, by any way you want to really be in control of what's happening. Plus you got a whole studio at your command at any given moment to do all kinds of cool things while you're performing or while you're jamming or improvising or, or composing and all kinds of things and it interrelate, can interrelate with your composition software and all kinds of things and with MIDI and all kinds of things like that. So it's a really huge concept to try and drive home into you so that you can understand that how flexible it, you know and how what kind of worlds it can open up to you so basically the first thing we're talking about is that on your amplifier and on your head you want to try to get this to be as flat a frequency as response as possible it's like having studio monitors that the head and the cabinet are affecting the sound as little as possible as you want them to that way you're starting out with as clean a sound as possible. 
And it's like even frequency response, I'll go in here and I'll use REW for my studio. And I've got a couple of different programs, but this is one I'm showing you and it's free because when I first started messing around with things, I, all I could afford was free, bro, free. It's free, I'll take it, bro, check it out. I can just study sound on this thing. All right, so I mean, you know, this, this one's free. And you can be looking at your, your different levels and things like that of what's happening, your sound in this, distortions, the impulse responses, the all the you know the rt 50s rt 60s you know you can really get a good sound um you know understanding what's happening with the sound all this is i was checking with some monitors and taking a look at what the frequency response and what was going on with the sound in the monitors and i this is an old i don't remember I mean, this is an old thing i did i just pulled up a file to show you because it's free you can all get it if it's free you know in the spectrogram of what was happening with the sound so this is a really good program, REW, that's free. There's lots of them, but this one's, like I said, free. And you can also do some room simulations and things like that, you know, with what's going on with your frequencies and, and the responses of your room and stuff like that. But this way you can measure your amplifier to be trying to get as flat a frequency response as possible, you know, as flat a frequency response as possible so that it's not coloring the sound in the frequency domain is as little as possible anyway that way your sound sculpting that you do in your studio is not affected by it and you can always go over your amp later and use its you know its effects and its drives and all kinds of things to help color the sound and it's very simple that you can also mic your amplifier you can all you can turn up your mic or you can go mic your amplifier you can mic it into your interface and into your DAW and analyze the sound whenever you're used to touching one of the knobs any of the knobs on your amplifier that you can mic it bring it into the DAW and analyze it with you know your basically your studio laboratory and analyze what's happening in the sound to try to pinpoint issues and problems that are in the signal chain or that the amp or the cabinet may be causing to your sound so that you can adjust it with EQs and, and other tools that you have in the studio. So that's a huge concept to get through your head. So the first thing I want to look at is you getting yourself as clean a sound out of your head and your amplifier as possible so that you can do most of your sound sculpting here. You may not, as you progress, you may use a lot of it from the head and, hand, and the head and cabinet, you know, that, you know, in conjunction with this stuff. But that's something you'll work through as you understand how they're working together by experimentation and the analyzing and things like that. So the first thing you're looking at, things like simple amp sims. Simple amp sims are great because with simple amp sims, you have a, basically, you know, a lot of control of if you've got as flat a frequency response from your amp that you've got depending on you can buy all kinds of different amp sims that got different different sims inside of them for the heads and you've got all that are going to give you different types of cabinets to emulate different kind of cabinets to work with you know that are going to be going through your other cabinet you can buy tons of them that way you don't have to go buy a, buy a bunch of different amps all the time if you like orange amplifiers you more than likely be able to find some type of amp sim that's really close to them that if you get that you know if you come to understanding you like that amplifier a lot and you're not just using it all the time you'll more likely come to try to get a very good head and amplifier that you can get you know you know dialed in on as clean as possible and use some amp sims to do whatever coloring you want so that's the first the thing in the signal chain there and then you come to things like you know like open air here this is a uh, convolution reverb and if i go into this and i want to go get impulse responses like here's some cab impulse responses you know that at 48 hertz and marshall you know that for some some impulse responses from you know that are simulating mic'd cabinets to emulate the sound that the cabinet would make. So you got a uh, you've got a convolution reverb with an impulse response that's you know that's basically a footprint of the cabinet mic'd at a certain distance with what certain type of a mic and a certain type of a cabinet and things like that. And it's really cool because it really adds to the sound. And it's going to make it sound that much more like whatever you want it to sound with with experimentation as you experiment and understand what that's doing to the sound. So that's the next thing. So those are those three things 
the issue that you're going to run into with that is, you know, after you've studied sound for a bit, <coughs> is analyzing what those things are doing. Being able to pull out a spectrum meter and really see what's happening to the timbers. Because if you look at something really simple like, like some pictures here, if you look at some pictures here and you're going, well, you've got some pictures. So if I look at, let's say here's, I've captured this is the sound of an accordion. And basically I've mapped out some of the harmonics happening. What harmonics? This is the root down below. Then it had a, this is the root, the fifth, the root again, the third harmonic, the fifth again, the flat seventh, the root. And it was going up in half steps going whole steps up there and then, then traveling on and up in half steps as it went up the spectrum. Now I know that sounds funny, but the understanding of this is as you understand anytime you pull out a spectrum meter, like, you know, just a simple spectrum meter, you're looking at the mix thing and you want to go, okay, want to pull out a spectrum meter and this spectrum meter is basically going to, well, anyway, if you pull out a spectrum meter and there'll be one in there, it's going to show you that kind of information so that you can see the harmonic content and the sound content in whatever you're doing and each time you add some other effect or as you look at your signal chain see what's happening to the sound you know see what's happening is there modulations up and down back and forth you know is there what harmonic content did it add to it take a snapshot of it with your computer and analyze what's happening to it it can get very in deep but you have very much understand that you can suppress one little teeny harmonic with an eq you know and, and you can be very you know very very you know micro you know sculpt your sound so I mean it's a huge concept so as we go around in this we've we've talked about those two things so that you basically are dealing with an amp sim and you're ch chosen an amp that sounds pretty good ahead and you know simulating some kind of cabinet and you've po and you possibly use some type of convolution reverb with some type of you know some type of a, a impulse response that's a you know an imprint of some type of cabinet that's been mic'd there's thousands of them so when you get to that point you've basically basically set up used your amp in your head to get as flat a sound you want you're trying to work in here so you can control the sound as much as you want because as you open up any one of these if they're affecting the sound you're going to be able to analyze it with the tools in the studio so you'll be able to analyze it in your lab i've got all kinds of tools and even a bunch of stuff from isotope and rx and i mean i've got matlab that that i use in conjunction with my studio to where i mean i can figure out whatever's going on anywhere so the other concept is what are the first things you want to deal with well you know you've dialed in your guitar and your head and your amplifier gets as flat as sound as you want so you're going to have an eq so you've got an eq that you basically pull up now this right here is a really basic eq this one is just one that comes with my studio so that you can address issues that are happening in the sound so it's very simple and a concept to understand whenever you're dealing with eq is the equal loudness contour because whenever you're dealing with an eq that you will need to understand how basically ear hears sound along the contours of the equal loudness contour so if you look at this one right around here around 500 hertz around a thousand hertz that your ears well actually i'd say around around 500 hertz that you're really hearing sound up to about this point very level does that make sense and as you get up in here you're gonna have to pick up push up the eq a little bit so that your ear hears this as well as this because it will hear this if you don't push the eq up in this area your ears gonna think this is louder than that because of the way you hear things this over here if you don't pull your eq down in this area your ears are going to think it's way louder than this over here because you can hear those things really well does that make sense your ear hears really hears frequencies in this area really well so you got to pull them down so that they hear equal across the spectrum so that 
Does that make sense? And I'll, I'll explain that to you why. Because if you get into the upper spectrum here, your ear doesn't hear it as well. So you got to push it way up in the EQ. And the, down in the lower end of the spectrum, you got to push it way up because your ear doesn't hear it as well. So you see a lot of people with their graphic EQs look like a smiley face because their ears can't hear that crap. And so they're trying to boost it so it sounds level because it wasn't mixed correctly so that it wouldn't sound level. So the, under, the basic understanding of this is when you start trying to EQ that you look at this equal loudness contour and you start looking to boost in there these areas, drop in these areas, boost in these areas, and boost in these areas as you start to try to EQ your sound because those are the areas you want to focus on first. So if you were looking at the EQ, this is a, basically an imprint of that equal loudness contour on this EQ that I was showing you in my studio that basically where I was, you know, not exactly, but, you know, just to, uh, to give you an idea that I'm boosting in this area, I'm pulling it down in this area, I'm boosting in this area, I'm trying to ride it up in this area to try, those are the first areas I start to target when I start trying to EQ the sound to try to get it where it's supposed to sound right because I understand how my ear hears sound and I understand that it hears, if I listen to music in this area, this area right here, it didn't hear it as well, so I have to boost the EQ. This over here and here, my ear hears those frequencies really well, so I got to pull them down a little bit so they don't sound way louder than these frequencies here, and by, and so on and so forth. So that's a very simple concept to understand. So as we come along with that, the basic thing we want to start working on is sculpting our EQ, starting with those areas, boosting and subtracting in those areas that we talked about you know is here's a pretty level around 500 hertz anything down going down that way you're going to want to boost and adjust the cue to because your ear doesn't hear it as well does that make sense and over in here you're going to want to be boosting those areas and down in here you're going to want to be subtracting on those areas somehow those that's where you want to start anyway to see if that's where you need to adjust that's not saying you won't that's not saying you will you may not adjust that you may go into here and you may come back in here you go to the default and you'll be like no i'm actually pulling down a little bit there i'm actually boosting up a little bit there i'm actually boosting up just a little bit in there i'm pulling down a little bit there and i'm boosting the heck out of that to the ceiling bro and my guitar sounds great i don't know i mean it really is investigation but that's where i suggest you start with what we talked about as far as equal loudness contour <clears throat> so at least you're addressing where your ear hears things better or worse at first and then after you address that and you figure yeah that's what it's doing you go no i really think that my guitar sounds really good if i bounce around 100 hertz i really drop the bass there i get this twangy sound dude and then i start boosting up around here now i got this boxy sound that's got you know this yeah i love this boxy sound that's the bass is getting taken out. It's got this really cool twangy boxy sound. I don't know. Does that make sense? So, I mean, but you, you understand that. So that's the first thing. And, you know, as you understand sound more, what's happening, you can put yourself a, you know, a, 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 all kinds of different analysis tools at the end of your signal chain here or at the end of your chain or in your mixing board that's in the DAW to analyze the sound as you do say, things and see what's happening. So that's the first thing, really messing around with your EQ and adjusting it to where you like it. You can do it. There's lots of different EQs. You can get graphic EQs. You can get smaller EQs like this. You know, the graphic EQ is not as versatile. The graphic EQ just has little knobs at certain frequencies, that, but you can get those also. You know, I mean, there's a lot of different EQs that you can get. So that's the first thing, really addressing the EQ to try to get the, your, your sound EQ'd and be playing your chords and stuff like that and really getting the EQ'd dialed in with your EQ as well as possible or a good starting point. After that, you really want to address delay. Now, this is a real simple analog delay. We're not going to get into what all's on here or even all the knobs. We're, we're really going to steer clear from being technical about it because um, instead of me just in there explaining you these things, I want you to investigate them and really understand that the basic concept of delay, you understand. So let me try to explain to you something about the Haas effect. If you go up to so many milliseconds, like in my studio, sometimes it's around 36 milliseconds, if you put a delay on it that goes a little bit above 36 milliseconds, then it starts sounding like a separate beat. It won't sound like it's 
it'll start sounding like two separate beats. Anything under that doesn't sound like two separate beats. It actually sounds like it's widening the sound, like it's making the sound fatter. And does that make sense? It's a huge recording technique to put delay on one speaker or another to add this really huge body and sound. Even as simple as vocals. The vocals record, you put them on one side, you put a 36 millisecond delay on the other side, the same vocal, and it gives this huge stereo effect. But you can have this on mono also. Just coming out of your cabinet, it'll add body. So you really want to stay under that Haas effect. At some point, you can get so much delay that you're going to get to a point to where it's so many milliseconds that it's going to start sounding like it's a doubled note, like it's hit again. And sometimes you might use that later on. Sometimes double it, all kinds of weird stuff you can do with delay, all kinds of cool stuff you can do with delay. But the whole concept here is just to add body. Somewhere underneath the Haas effect that's just adding body to, you know, to the sound so that it's adding sounding fuller and fatter and it's a huge concept that you'll find as you experiment around with it that you will really come to some really understanding of it just sounding fuller fatter and better period so then we get into reverbs now reverb is the same way i'll normally put two different kind of reverbs i'll put a normal reverb in here like this one's a room reverb and then i'll put a convolution reverb which is the a, a convolution reverb so and a little bit of reverb normally you get into reverb and if i start talking about how much people say how much reverb well like normally i'll get a pretty good room i like and i'll put like three percent or four percent mix in to dry and wet sound and it's just adding body you can't really tell there's any reverb on there and i'll do the same thing with the convolution that's in the chain also that it's just adding a little bit more body and you can't really tell there's reverb there at all because later on i'll put another open air on there or another reverb if i really want a reverb effect from time to time you know that's just adding body those are the basic fundamentals that i want in my sound that are just really adding body to the sound so that or a convolution reverb or a combination of both of them that I can put impulse response in there, any kind of impulse response that I want, you know, that maybe not be a Marshall stack. I might come back in here and I might go, okay, I want what kind of impulse response. I'll go into, I'll go into my studio files and I'll say, okay, well, impulse responses or I want, let's see, I had some, where is, I had some in here for demos. Um, guitar, I yeah, still for my device, did my test. Here's some responses, large hall, small hall some Taj Mahal and I made some other ones that I've made myself that were based on the equal loudness contour I mean you can do all kinds of things with convolution reverb but I just use that to just build some sound so now I got a really nice full fat sound that sounds really good and to top it off I'll normally go and I add a chorus so I've got a chorus in here also that like you take this chorus you can do a chorus or a doubling effect on it. How many different voices that I add into it. Now the concept of this is that I normally will mix this in the depth of it very little. Sometimes, you know, two, three, four, sometimes up to 10%. That's a lot mixing into it because I don't want a chorus sound. I want that doubled sound, that chorus sound or that using it as a doubler to add rich harmonics uh, higher in the spectrum like does that make sense so it's basically going to chorus it but it's just adding like ghost harmonics and adding richness to the sound that are just basic building blocks so whether i'm playing clean or with distortion later on that those are always in place those effects and what we've talked about those are in place to just build this really nice lush full body that I can mangle any way I want later, that it'll still always have that nice full body of sound, no matter how bad I mangle it with some, you know, my new mangler distortion, bro. Does that make sense? No matter what I do with it, or my big muff box, you know, thing, you know, this chorus flanger outer limits box, dude, all right, that's so cool. <clears throat> you know, because I've all, you know, if you're a guitarist, you're going to go through a phase of buying all kinds of crap that, you know, that you're going to experiment with. Wow, that's really cool. I don't know. You might, may not. I did. I love sound. I experiment with all that crap. I had a blast. 
So, you know, but that's just, at this point, those three things have added huge amounts of body to the sound. So you've got a nice, rich, lush, full sound coming out. You've, you've set up, you've chosen an amplifier, the head, cabinet. You've got your, you might have added some with the cabinet with your head behind you to add to a little bit. You've EQ'd it really well, so it sounds really good with your guitar, and you've, you've got or this rich full sound and you've got some knobs on your guitar for you know for tone and different pickups you can use so you can make a little bit of adjustment to that does that make sense once you've got you've started out you've tried to leave your guitar set in a very nominal area like your tone knob in the middle and you're choosing you know the middle pickup or something like depending on how many pickups you got like the middle position or something that way if you want to go one way or the other you can but you've got a really good starting point that's there that you can have you can add make it brighter or you can make it darker with going darker or lighter on your guitar because you've got everything set in the middle and you've set it up to basically how you like it to sound in here and you can adjust it a little bit you know with your guitar does that make sense so i hope that that makes sense that can be a very touchy situation as you develop your own style and technique. You might come in there and say, nope, I do that just like that. I've been playing 20 years. You know, I've got, I'm like Vinny, I'm like Joe Satriani or God knows who you might say. And I know I want my guitar to sound like that. And so I don't even mess with that. And, but that takes time. So those are the basic building blocks there. So then we get into a couple other things. There are multitudes of effects. The first thing I want to talk about is distortion because... If you've got a clean sound now, if you've got a clean sound now, there are all kinds of effects that you can add a little bit of color to it. I mean, there's all kinds of effects. So you really want to understand if you've thought about sound and you understand sound, you're going to really understand what some of those effects might do. Some of them you might stumble upon. You'd be surprised how many times I stumbled upon some effect and I'd just be like, whoa, that sounds so cool. It's like this flanger phaser chorus the weird thing but it sounds so cool when i play into it i mean i love it it's really cool in certain applications i can really use it you might run into one of those you use the rest of your dang life i don't know that's really hard to try to focus it we're trying to focus on the basics so after that i really suggest you look at a couple other different things the first thing these are just some basic ones in my studio is phasers phasers is the first thing experiment around with phasers really lightly the depth or the mix knob on it between wet and dry very little at first and just blending it in you know seeing what it does you know experiment with just a little bit does that give it a little bit of texture what's it doing to the sound it's coloring it a little bit adding a little bit of texture and then i want you know real phaser sound you know and it's our experiment with the phaser what all it does you know what all it can do and the flanger is the same way these have been around for I don't know how long and they can add with just a little bit of depth or you know wet and dry you know from wet and dry sound coming into it can add huge amounts of just coloring the sound a little bit that you might really just leave in your chain you know you might go what you might get through the things we talked about of the basics up to the chorus and you might go put a flat phaser on there and it might be part of your signal chain constantly no matter what you do that it just adds this little bit of coloration and tone to what you're doing and at this point it's really cool but i really tend to have you those are added things in my mind that you may find that like that but with this chorus and with the delays and with the reverb set we talked about you got a nice full bodied sound and at that point that those things are going to be added different sounds so the next thing you'd probably be looking at those are experience those are just we'll look at those just like any plugin you might come into any type of plugin or effect you might run into they run into the category of something like a phaser or a flange or something like that that you will use that effect from certain times or delays sometimes you get ping pongy delays going around all over the place for certain types of effects and it might become part of your style and technique later on but it, it may not 
you know so those are added effects you may use from time to time they fall into that category and of experimentation and really sitting down and analyzing what the sounds doing understand what a phaser does what is a phaser what does it do what's it doing the sound it's modulating something it's causing a phase issue what does that mean and you need to look that up and study a little bit about it so you really understand the sound but the next thing i really want to talk about was distortion because distortion is a huge concept now we talked about the couple different types of distortion being overdriving amperage capabilities of a circuit or overdriving speed capabilities of a circuit now there's a couple of different concepts here to address the first thing is addressing that the distortion when you start adding distortion there's a couple of different things to look at the first thing you want to look at is what kind of distortion are you looking at I mean what kind of distortion I mean are you looking at some type of there's there's even an odd harmonics so if you're looking at odd harmonics that this is going to be more like a clipping distortion that's a, a lot of times normally any type of distortion pedal which is very dirty and you've got like even harmonics which can be like overdriving the speed capabilities of a circuit which are very clean which all we will almost give like a violin cello characteristic to the distortion and it's a very huge concept to understand because almost all guitarists will at some point add a little bit of distortion it's either coming through their head through somewhere in their signal chain but there's normally it's not totally clean and you know if you're heading towards a clean player that even harmonics added in there can really add some rich harmonic textures to your clean sound to where from all you know perception you sound like you're a really clean player not using any distortion or very little but with those even harmonics it adds some rich harmonic character to what's going on with your clean sound and if you like dirty sound and you're into heavier guitar playing you're leaning more towards odd harmonics and a good way to clean up odd harmonics is with some even harmonic distortion so you can add in even harmonic distortion to really clean it up to give it a little bit more cleaner sound so it's not quite so dirty you may not want the dirty sound like you know Peter Townsend just kicked in the speaker you know cone of his cabinet you may not want it quite that dirty you might want it a little bit cleaner than that and a little bit more softer and not quite that harsh <clears throat> so those are concepts that will help you whether you're playing clean distortion clean guitar or dirty guitar or heavy metal guitar or old rock style guitar whatever that those are what's happening there and ways to see the basic principles of seeing distortion because you're looking at wave components I know this is very small here but you can see the square wave you can see the the harmonics contents of that what's happening with that you have a lot of odd harmonics there when you're dealing with like a square wave and when you go down like sawtooth wave you've got a lot of even and hard even and odd harmonics so and that's leaning more towards you know like a violent sound which can very much clean up a really dirty distortion to make it sound much smoother now these ones here these are analog sounds so they don't look quite so square quite so sawtooth wave because they're more analog and it's not as clean but if you look at that like even something like on this plug-in here I've got this isotope trash too that I just love this plug-in it's so cool because I figured out to make a preset on this that really simplified my distortion use that I really was having issues with that I've got some distortions that I use but here I can add more and more even harmonics or odd harmonics to my sound that is going in those different directions and if I'm playing a clean guitar and I've got those basics that we talked about set up and dialed in really well and I've got this really rich full sound and I add some even harmonics to it that it really adds this colorization that's coloring the sound now that can be as you progress you may you will most definitely find that with different pickups and different this and different that different da 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 that that will affect it a little bit differently but you can always go back and you can adjust it with your eq high and low pass filters and things like that so this is the next concept understanding adding even and odd harmonics 
understanding that most of your pedals are going to be odd harmonics. And if you really want to get into some even harmonics, you're going to find a pedal that's a distortion, that's acts on distortion, that's actually giving you even, even harmonic content so that it's a much smoother, cleaning sound distortion that even if you like dirty distortion, that you can add some of that in there. Like I'll put one of these trash twos in the signal chain and then it's like odd harmonics. And then I'll put another one of these plugins, the exact same plugin on after it with even harmonics on it. And then as I go in there, I'll dial some of those, you know, some of those even harmonics into those odd harmonics to dirty it or to clean it up to make it sound a little smoother so it doesn't sound like, you know, Peter Townsend's, you know, you know, speaker cone kicked in. I don't want it quite that dirty, you know, bro? So that's the next thing is distortion. Whether or not you're playing clean or dirty, that, you know, those things are going to color your sound and give it that much more body because it's not all just about distortion and that it's dirtying the sound it's that you know even playing clean a little bit of even harmonics or in, and even a little bit of odd harmonics can richen the sound can make it sound richer and fuller like there's it colors the harmonic content and we talked about the harmonic content whenever you're dealing with the harmonic content of any sound that what did I do with those pictures? No. Okay, well, I don't know what I did with them. So, but anyway, that it colors the sound. So, I, even if I was playing, let's say, I've got those basic components we talked about set up, and I've got my, I've got these all set up. I've got it EQ'd really well, and I've really spent some time with it. I've got a little bit of delay under the Haas effect, under 36 milliseconds, that's giving it a nice, rich, full sound. I've messed with my reverbs. I dialed in just a little bit, you know, in there to just give it a nice, full, fat sound without it sounding like it's reverb or delay. And then I've added a chorus in there and done the same thing and added just a little bit in there to where it's just adding this full body and adding rich harmonic content. Because the understanding of adding a chorus in like that is like adding distortion. Well, you're adding other harmonic content to the sound, trying to get it to sound as full and rich as possible. Now, the distortion can be the same way if I'm playing clean. Then I go directly looking for some directly looking for some some even harmonics here to and start dialing them in. You know, I'm going to add more. I want to really add some more. You know, even harmonics, or I want to add less. I want to tweak them a little bit and add a little bit of odd harmonic into it. I want it to be bipolar and I want to do some, I mean, I don't know. You can really get into distortion and do some really wild things to your sound. But it's very, the basic components is e adding even and odd harmonics. And sometimes when you've done that after the sound, you might want to get out of the EQ again and do simple things like high, low pass filter. Because if you get in there and you start wanting to do that, now you have, this is a high pass filter and a low pass filter to try to sculpt that because you might have frequency content in the lower end that you don't want there and you might have some frequency content in the upper end that you don't want up there and maybe add different you know different uh, uh, grades does that make sense so if you're looking at this coming through there that you can start to sculpt that harmonic content at the end of your chain even more and you may go back in here after you've done that and you might boost a little bit here or drop a little bit there or who knows what to just completely fine tune it to really get it fine tuned once you've gotten to that point now if you've gotten to this point that you really can understand that even that distortion a little bit of even or odd harmonics can very much be part of that basic signal chain even if you're just playing clean now that just fattens it all up so you've got you've used your your amp sim your open air and your you've used your impulse response you've eq'd it really well you've used a little bit of delay or the Haas effect and a little teeny bit of reverb convolution reverb and maybe some reverb room reverb and a chorus you know just lightly dialed in just out of this huge body and on top of it you might have come in here and added to some distortion really looked at adding a little bit of you know even or odd harmonics just a little bit that really just adds this richness so even at this point whether you're just playing clean or you're going to add distortion to it later that you've got this huge rich sound that sounds really close to what you want it to be 
Now you get in there and you're going to EQ that a little bit more if you're done with it there. Now at that point, you've got this really rich, really good sound. You've really analyzed it. You brought out your analyze tool and really figured out what's going on there. Now if you want to really distort the crap out of it and mangle the hell out of it, well, you know what you got to work with. You've got distortion. You know what kind of distortion you have to work with. You've got some tools to work with it. And you're really going to have to spend some time really understanding what the, distor what the type of distortions, how you're mixing them in, is going to add it. But, you know, at this point, so now you've come to the point to where you've got that set up, even with this distortion set up here, as your basic setup. And at this point, you're a clean guitarist. So you've got this dialed in. You've got this rich, cool clean sound that is just badass bro and it's so cool and you want to start messing with some other effects and now you've got to the point to where you've really dialed that in for now now you can start experimenting with phasers and flangers and you know you know twilight zone effects all kinds of weird shit all over the place i don't want to get into that too much because that can be a lot of experimentation for a whole lot of guitarists they really will get to this point with you know getting their sound to where it's nice full and fat and colored really well the way they like it and they're either going to play clean and they'll sometimes go use a flaser or flanger or some other effect some kind of wah effect or who knows what they might do that's just they're using it as an accent or effect while they're playing you know as you know something to to go to that's different from their normal guitar setup that they normally play most of the time so the other thing you'd be going to is adding more distortion. So you like really heavy metal distortion or something like that. You can go in here and you understand that what we talked about with even in all harmonics that you start trying to dial those in to where with that sound you start trying to get that to where it's you adding distortion. Now you can add that, you can use that, and you can come from a few different places. You can come from your amp sim from your amp sim and your drives on your amp sim you can also use the drives on your head and on top of it you can go into here you can add another one of something like this at the end of your signal chain to really find sculpt even in on harmonics to really sculpt it the way you want and sometimes you might even put another amp sim on after all this that you're running into that's you know that's got a really cool distortion sound it can get a little complicated so i try to steer you away from that because that can get real complicated i've set up some really complicated signal chains and i tell you from my experimentation experience with that that i steered the hell clear of that crap i try to keep it as simple as possible and that may sound really complicated all the stuff i was but it's about as simple as i could break it down to really have as much control of the sound as i wanted and just remember the concepts we talked about up to this point and you with what you understand that you should have a really super ultimate control of your clean guitar sound that you really were shooting for and understanding what tools you have to try to sculpt that and things you can add to color the sound and to really dial it in with what we've talked about. And if you want really distorted guitar, that you can start experiment with other types of plugins. You could even put some other pedals in line if you wanted, and to to add to them, you can use the drive from your head from the amp sim, and you can shape it with something like this trash too, adding or subtracting. You know, you can add more harmonic content, even or odd harmonics, to sculpt the sound a little bit more. You can add high and low pass filters with your EQ at the end of that to really dial in what how you want your sound to sound and to take in out lower content to take out upper content to boost anywhere you know because at this point the, at this point at the end of your signal chain you're really at a point of doing some high and low pass filtering and then fine tuning you might want to boost up a little bit here you might want to you might want to drop it a little bit there you might come with us over here and you might go well i want to I want to boost it right in there a little bit. Yeah, indeed. Oh, oh yeah, that sounds so cool. So, yeah, I mean, I don't need some, but that's why I get, bro. When I get a dollar like that, I'm like, yeah, dude. <coughs> so, and it's fun adventure. And as you do this, you got all these tools in the studio because you've made it your central unit for your entire 
rig that we talked about in a previous video that you've got mountains of different tools I was showing you some of my tools from this here from this from this here that I have just in my studio but I've got tons of I mean it's like I've got tons I mean, in here, it's like I've got, I've got, I mean, there's Fab Filter EQ. That's a really cool EQ. I've got a bunch of, I've got all kinds of tools from Isotope for sculpting sound. I've got RX6 for, for, for working with sound. And some of it I've actually got to work in real time. So, I mean, there's mountains of tools to fall back on. And it's very, you know, I try to keep things as simple as possible. But sound sculpting can be a little complicated because sound is very complex. And it just is. And there's no way around it. So you need to get in there and start messing with this stuff to really understand. So let's just review really quick. What we've basically dealt with is we've gone back. We've tried to simplify your system to get as, you know, to, to get as clean a sound as possible so that we can start working on what we're going to do with it. We've EQ'd it. We've added, added depth and body and with some analog delay and some reverberations. Now you have to understand some reverberations may color the sound a little bit with different impulses. If you're using like convolution reverb. And we've added some chorus in there, just lightly blended into where you can't tell it's chorus, but it's added rich harmonic content to it. We've added a little bit of maybe odd or even harmonics to it with something like Isotope Trash 2 that's just given it this rich, full harmonic texture. And I know that sounds funny because I'm trying to stay away from, you know, pulling out all my notebooks and, you know, giving you mathematical formulas on, um, you know, colorization and, you know, um, colorizing harmonic textures. I'm trying to stay away from that because the idea, you'll get the idea. And you, you may go into it like I did like that, but I'm trying to avoid it because you can probably get through it without having to go that deep. So, but it's adding all these rich harmonic content and texture to your sound just with what we talked about with those plugins and you might add a little bit of phaser to it you might like just a little bit of phaser that doesn't have any sound going that just that adds that texture to it i don't know sometimes i have i mean i like just add a little bit to it and it's like it drives this really cool effect and i'll compose a whole song like that sometimes you know so but those are above and beyond plugins so you've got your clean sound dialed in with that you've got a good full fat rich harmonically just pleasing beautiful sound and you've got it dialed in bro and you're good to go now whether you play clean like that or and then you're good to go and you might boost a little bit here and there or add a little more of this or that in the things we've talked about or you go to distortion you've got a really full rich sound to distort the hell out of in any way damn way you want but at least you'll have a really good full, full rich sound as an underlying foundation underneath that and we've talked about how you should go about distorting it and what tools you have in your signal chain there to really sculpt it and does that make sense and you will find you'll be surprised how much control you have over the sound and how much that you can change the sound of what's happening with the tools that we've talked about and experiment around with them and, and utilizing them now that's very basic I can get into some as you get into this you will find there's all kinds of other things to do with your sound and control but those are the basics and as far as just being a guitarist if you get to that point and you've dialed it in and you are set and you're good to go and you need more control than that for your sound to develop and what you want by that time you should have a pretty good understanding what's missing and you should be able to target what's missing and find a solution to to fill in that gap to make it the way you want to sound because by this time you should have a pretty good understanding of sound you should have a pretty good understanding from experiment with this dialing your sound in what that's doing why it's doing that how it's affecting the sound and to be able to really take it to a next level which you more than likely in my humble opinion you probably won't have to if you you will probably find that most of those tools there that between those tools your head your guitar your amp sim and those tools you'll be able if you're just playing clean you'll be able to dial it into where you're just happy as a damn clam bro and if you want a distortion you start talking you know to adding in distortion with 
you know, some type of distortion pedal as a foundation to build upon and then using your amp, your head and your amp sim head, the drives on those and using something like Trash 2 to work on the harmonic content that you should be able to dial that in to where it's just badass any way you want. And then at the end of it, going after it with an EQ, a high and low pass filtering it and doing a little bit of, you know, you know, finite work at the very end to just tweak it to where it's just the way you want it. And, you know, if you get beyond that and you're still not getting it, that by that time you should be able to understand something else is missing and you more likely will have a pretty good understanding of what that is. So I hope you enjoyed this video. I hope with that understanding you start working on that and, and, and diving headlong into that and approaching your developing your sound with those things. I think that you will be amazed at how quickly that progresses into being what you want. And as you develop as a guitarist and develop your own style and technique, you'll have a pretty good understanding and be able to really go address the issue that you're having in one of those areas. It'll be being addressed on your head, it'll be addressed in your amp sim, it'll be being addressed on one of the one of the one of the things that are happening in the chain here from the EQ to the analog delay to to the reverbs to the chorus to the distortions and the harmonic content that you're coloring it with that you will find that you should be able to develop your sound with those tools in phenomenal ways and you'll be surprised how much less time you spend trying to listen to somebody else telling you what you need to get your sound and more time studying the things that I've just told you to study and to dial it in and let it progress and understand that it's going to progress and change as your style and technique improve it's probably going to change because your understanding of your style and technique and your understanding of what that's doing to it it's going to improve over time and they will start to blend together and you will just have yourself just one wonderful time dude dialing in your sound peace up love bro good luck on your journey on dialing in your sound and I hope to see you in the next video.